At this stage, we've got a tested and working Symfony 4 JSON API that allows us to get, post, put, patch, and delete our album resources. There are a lot of extra tasks that we could do here, but there's one that I'd immediately recommend we do, and this is one that's a real gotcha. So during development, we do everything on our local machine, often working with a web server on localhost or some internal IP address. And Symfony makes this super easy for us, as we've already seen with Bing console service start, and we're away. Now, given that we do have a working Symfony 4 JSON API, it makes sense that we'd like to get our shiny new code out there into the world. Or to put it another way, we want to ship this to production. But there's a problem. By default, our API will be open for access only to requests coming from the same point of origin. Now, this isn't a problem specific to Symfony. This is a cross-origin resource sharing or cores issue. You could be using Laravel or Django or Spring or even raw PHP and you'd still hit on this issue. So what this means is that say we have our Symfony 4 API on a subdomain, something like api.rsite.com, yet we have our front end on www.rsite.com. Then the HTTP requests from the front end to the back end are going to fail. Now this is exactly the sort of annoyance that will highly likely catch you out the very first time that you need to put your API out into production. Now, I don't want you to just take my word for this, we need to see the problem occur and then we'll cover the fix, which fortunately for us is actually quite simple. To begin with, we're gonna edit our local host file, which in my case is etc hosts. If you're on Windows, it would be C Windows system 32 drivers etc hosts. We're gonna add in two new entries, both of them point at 127.0.0.1, in other words, local host. You can name these whatever you like. I'm going with apirsite.com and different.com. It really doesn't matter what addresses you use, change them to be whatever you'd like. The key part here is that they're two different domains. This could be a root domain and a subdomain or two different domains or any other combo. With our two fake domains, we can now convince the built-in PHP web server to start serving requests for each domain. And as you can see here, if you've still got the Symfony web server running from the previous videos, then be sure to stop it first and then restart it using the new command. Now, one interesting point is if you use curl or postman, you can actually send in your requests now to apirsite.com and port 8000 and you won't notice any problem. This problem only comes into play when we bring in the browser. Now later on in this course, we're gonna cover some of the more advanced libraries and frameworks that JavaScript offers, but for the moment, we're gonna do things as basic as possible. Now this may be a bit more verbose, but it means that we don't need any external dependencies. So I'm gonna start by creating a directory on my computer. I'm gonna use the temp directory. It doesn't really matter where you create this. I'm going to create a folder called the front end test and in there I'm going to create an index.html. Into the index.html file I'm going to paste the contents of my clipboard and I appreciate it's a little bit tricky to see but if you look in the show notes this code is there in full. Now as a heads up I borrowed and adapted the bulk of this JavaScript from MDN. Again it's linked in the show notes. It's not super important that you understand this code at this stage. Just copy and paste it into your index.html file. Update the URL if you've changed the domain of your API. We're going to work through code that's very similar to this shortly. And from a high level, this code sends in a get request to our slash album one endpoint. And we'll do this by clicking the only button that's on the page. If the request succeeds, we'll log the response to the console. And if the request fails, we'll log that to the console also. Save this file and then use the built-in PHP web server to run this file as though it were on different.com or whichever domain you're using. With the web server up and running, we should now be able to visit different.com on port 8080 in our browser. Now make sure to open up the web developer tools, which should be control or command I in Chrome or Firefox. The two tabs that are interesting to us here are console and network. So at this stage, we're gonna click the make a request button, which will send in our request to slash album slash one. And we'll see that the console logs a big error. But if we go to the network tab, the request itself gives a 200 status code, but if we take a look at the response body, you'll see that there's nothing there. And it's kind of strange. Now, if this was a real world project, the first thing that I would do would be to validate that the code works just fine when the front end and the back end code are served from my development domain. So we're gonna do this by shutting down both the PHP web server and also our Symfony 4 web server. So just control C on the web server to close it off and PHP bin console server stop for the Symfony version. Now we're going to copy the index.html file from our front-end test directory to our Symfony 4 API's public directory. We need to make a single change to this file. Instead of sending in our get request to apirsite.com, we're instead going to send it to 127.0.0.1. Once you've made this change, save and close. And from your Symfony 4 project route, start up the web server as you most frequently would in development. 
so does the bin console server start. Now if we repeat the process by opening up the index.html file on 127.0.0.1 and sending in our get request, this should now pass because both our front-end code and our back-end JSON API live on the same origin, that 127.0.0.1 on port 8000. And we can validate this by looking at the network tab and seeing that this time we have the expected response body. Okay, so we know our code works. We just need to fix this cores issue. So one of the major benefits of creating a standalone JSON API is that it can be used and deployed independently of our front-end code. This means that our Symfony 4 JSON API can be used by React or Angular or Vue or a mobile app or some Symfony console application, etc, etc. Literally anything that can speak HTTP. Of course, being limited to these things all existing on one domain is not at all what we want. This exercise has been to see this very problem in action. Now, fortunately, the solution to this problem, for our Symfony 4 sites at least, is to simply install a single Symfony bundle, the Nelmio Cores bundle. Now, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. It might be Nelm IO. I'm never too sure. Even so, we just need to do a composer require Nelmio slash Cores hyphen bundle. And again, apologies if I'm mispronouncing that. As we're using Symfony 4 with Flex, all the bundle setup has been taken care of for us, which is really nice. And a new file has been created in config packages nelmio underscore cores dot yaml. An addition has also been made to our dot env file, the new environment variable of cores underscore allow underscore origin. Now it really depends on your circumstances as to what value you want to add in here. If you only want to allow a specific domain or a set of domains, then you can fill in those domains here. In our case, we want to allow anyone to access our Symfony 4 JSON API. So I'm going to set a regular expression that matches on any URL. Again, this entire process has no impact on our setup when we're using Bing console server start or in development mode or we're all on the same origin. It only impacts our earlier demo where we use different domains. So we're gonna test this again by starting up our Symfony web server, this time pointing at apirsite.com on 8000 again. I'm gonna start up the front end site on the different.com domain. This is effectively our original example that we saw wasn't working, but now that we have cores properly set up, this should be working. So I'm gonna click the button to make the get request and straight away we can see the success output is logged to our console. You can check the network tab and we can see that we got back our 200 response and this time we do have the expected response body. So even though this is a quick fix when you know how to fix it, if you don't, it's one of those problems that could cost you hours or days of time. Now one final thing is don't forget to tidy up. I'm gonna remove the two entries from my ETC host file and don't forget to stop the various servers that you've got running.